I think I'm Dennis Noble. Sometimes I am certain I am Dennis Noble. And you're from? Oxford University. I'm a professor there and I am also the president of the International Union of Physiological Sciences. How about that? <laughs> And where did you hear about Abdul Dubak conference? Well, I was sent an invitation, and when I saw what you were trying to do, I was extremely enthusiastic about it. It's actually rare for me to stay through a whole conference because I get so many invitations to give lectures that I often come just for the day of my <coughs> presentation, stay for the day and then disappear again. This time, I thought what you're doing is very relevant to the biggest problem that universities and society face today, which is this, that there's a sense in which people are constricting their minds. We are forced as academics to look for money to do the research, to find the ways in which you can support the team, and that encourages same way thinking. You have to think the same way as those who are going to judge what you are going to put in as a proposal. If you put in a proposal that is way outside the box, you can be pretty certain it would be very hard to get the funding for it. That is a huge problem in the world today. And academic disciplines, they, they tend to shift towards the orthodox view. I call the people who think outside the box, I call them the pink diamonds. <laughs> you know what a pink diamond is? The ordinary diamond we all know, it is the, it is the, the white or clear diamond that, that glows and it's beautiful. The pink diamond is very rare. What you're doing is encouraging the thinkers who will become the pink diamonds of the future. And I think this is so important, that's why I decided to stay through the whole meeting. So you like the whole concept? Of the concept conference. is, yes, absolutely, the concept is what we need. And it's terrific that you've done what you've done. We, we, need, we need this to be something that encourages those who have, what should we call them, even heretical thoughts. We should encourage the heretics, actually. Some of them will be wrong, of course, um, but you have to put up with that. The few who are absolutely right will change the world. The few who will show how you get out of one box and move to a different situation will change the world. Of course you will have people who've got, they think, excellent ideas for how you solve the big problems of society. And some of those will be crazy ideas. Some of them will fail. The difficulty is you can't judge in advance. Initially, what appears to be a heretic eventually becomes a revolutionary, somebody who changes the world. But you can't tell that at the time that they have the heretical ideas. So what you're doing is exactly what the world needs. It, the world of universities needs it and society needs it. And what, do you, what was the, uh, I don't know, what did you like the most so far at the conference? Oh, that's very difficult because it's been an extraordinary range. First of all, I've been educated by attending a conference at which there are talks on quantum mechanics, for example, uh, on synthetic biology, about those two I don't really know very much about, and I learnt a lot from learning about those. But then you've had talks on, for example, language and metaphor, Curiously, that's very important for scientists because, as I try to make clear in my talks at this meeting, sometimes it's the misuse of language, the misuse of metaphor, that keeps people inside a box. They don't sometimes realize that they're using a metaphor. They will say, oh, I'm not using a metaphor, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> in fact, what they're doing is using language to avoid telling the truth. But they don't know that. They're trapped. That's another kind of box, of course. So what I've learned from coming to a meeting like this, where there are many talks in areas way outside my own field, is that I've been educated by them. And of course, because you've chosen thinkers who are trying to think outside the box, it's an unusual conference, because it's from those who tend not to give the orthodox story. We've just had a talk uh, on an area of biology where the 
talker, the presenter, has actually presented ideas that I would regard as out of the box because they're dealing with ways in which you deal with that problem that are not the standard way of dealing with the problem. And was conference as you expected? I didn't know what to expect actually, <laughs> except that I've been to Slovenia before and therefore I'm how should I best put this? I think Slovenia is unusual. You're a very tiny country, but you have an influence because of the way in which you put on various conferences and encourage academic activity. You have an influence beyond the weight of your population. And that's great. And I think it possibly comes from something else that I like about Slovenia. I can't speak your language, or I can say thank you, or something like that, Father. <laughs> but what I like about Slovenia is that over many centuries of very difficult political situations, it's kept its culture. And I think that's part of what makes you as a nation strong and proud. And I think that's what enables you to do conferences like this. I mean, it's a it's a, a long series of steps, of course, between preserving the culture of a nation, encouraging those who are strong enough and feel confident enough to do unusual things. But I think you can see the connections. The out-of-the-box concept, it seems to me, is equivalent to the way in which I would put the need for the academic world to look for what I call the pink diamonds, to look for the very unusual thinkers, and to try to encourage that kind of thinking. And I think that's what out of the box is trying to do. I think it needs to be encouraged to do it.